reported that one of the largest data leaks ever discovered has occurred. So here's how to check if you've been affected. Yesterday, researchers found that a massive 26 billion personal records had been exposed in what they called the mother of all breaches. With Zuck mm -hmm. commenting, <laughs> rookie numbers. This is the list of the companies affected, which include the likes of Twitter, LinkedIn, Dropbox, MyFitnessPal, Adobe, Canva, and the list goes on. The researchers claim that this breach is extremely dangerous and could prompt a tsunami of cybercrime, including identity theft and unauthorized access. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back, Seekers, man. You guys already know what we do here on this channel, man. But if you don't, we break down scary room creepy videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, anything weird, usual, and explain. You can find right here on this channel. Um, like I said, I just want to thank you, Seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, and who's been subbing up to the channel. I appreciate that, man. Like I said, we're seeking the truth just like you. Found this video for you guys today, man. Let's check it out. woman sold her baby to six predators who viciously abused her and then ended that baby's life possibly with a baseball bat i just got this story because i was tagging it to the paranormal file tag below go follow this person gosh amazing hair but underneath that hair is a heart of gold this woman this monster um, possibly will get the uh, the d penalty mm -hmm. they might end her because she sold her baby to predators who used and abused her. This is the baby. And it might be more than just six people that used this baby. That baby was innocent. That baby knew no evil except for that baby's mother. Mm -hmm. The mother was a drug addict and sold the baby for drug money. What do you guys think about this? And go follow the paranormal files. I think we all can agree that Harambe. I'll be telling our fellow seekers, man. Freaking money. Bro, I was, I was saying it, man, just to see I can get that message, man. Money's the root of all evil. But to hear that she sold her baby to freaking six freaking evil human beings, bro. And now look what she's facing, man. The, the, that penalty, bro. It was so horrific, man, that they didn't have, I guess, the. Project. They didn't feel they had any other choice, man. I'm telling you guys, watch out for money, bro. The things people will do for money, bro, it's truly scary. Getting turned into a screensaver has done irreversible damage to our timeline. But let's mm -hmm. talk about the gorilla before Harambe, because this happened before, except it had a very different ending. So this was actually 30 years before Harambe became a hashtag in 1986. Five-year-old Levin Merritt was oh. visiting the Jersey Zoo, which actually isn't in New Jersey, with his family. When he tried leaning over to get a better look and instead airdropped himself 20 feet straight into the gorilla pen. It really always is gorillas, ain't it? You never hear about this happening with chimps. Damn. Probably a good, good reason for that. Levin broke his arm, cracked his skull, and knocked himself out cold. But worst of all, when he woke up, it was to a 400-pound silverback looming over him. And everyone watching thought the kid was about to get put back to sleep permanently. Instead, what they actually saw was 25-year-old Jumbo standing over the boy, gently stroking his back with his hand, and even keeping the other curious gorillas away from him. And when the kid started screaming, because honestly, who wouldn't? Jumbo took charge and led all the others away from the boy into a small hut in their enclosure. Which is when paramedics were able to retrieve the boy. And the funny thing is, Jumbo's actions might have saved more than just a little boy. Back then, King Kong was to gorillas what Jaws did to sharks, and the general public wasn't rocking with gorillas. But seeing a 400-pound unit protecting a human child, it was like Jabba hit everyone with the Uno reverse, and it helped change public perception of gorillas. Hmm. As for Levin, that day and Jumbo changed his life forever, and he still has the toy gorilla the zoo gave him. And as for gentle giant Jumbo, he passed tense in 92, but all that really means is he was there to welcome Harambe 24 years later. The more you know. Creepy facts that will give you- Wow, what the hell? I never knew that, man, because I remember yeah, when that Harambe hashtag, people, when that freaking little boy fell in there, they had a freaking in Harambe's life, man, but never did know, like, the exact opposite happened just, like, a freaking earlier, bro. It's like it's a yin, -y, a yin and a yang, bro. It's like, you are just good, man. That's actually crazy if you think about it, see, because that happened with Harambe, but there was another one where he was actually protecting that little boy. Really mean, bro. Back and forth, man. 99% of you chills, part two. More people die every year from taking selfies than are killed in shark attacks. So next time you are taking a selfie, be aware of your surroundings and be careful. Refrigerator doors are magnetic because children used to die inside them. 
while playing hide and seek. These older model refrigerators could only be opened from the outside. So when the children hid in them and shut the door, there was no way of them getting out and they died. The reason why dogs love squeaky toys so much, because it triggers an ancestral instinct that reminds them of a whimpering prey. So next time you see your dog chewing on a squeaky toy, it actually thinks it's chewing on a dying animal crying for its life. People who spend more than two hours a day in front of a screen actually make their lives 1.4 years shorter. So I think some of us have to get off our phones for a little bit. That last one, bro. Really hit home, man. You don't. I guess that's why you don't want to be freaking staring at screens a couple of days, bro. I guess it's poor, man. It makes your freaking life shorter, bro. And the thing about how he said when you're taking selfies, man, that actually more people pass away from that than actual shark attacks, bro. That's actually a scary one, too, man, because that's saying, like, a lot about people not paying attention to their freaking surroundings, bro. You always have to do that, man. When I'm out, I don't even like to wear headphones because I want to be aware. I want to know what's going on all freaking around me, bro. I'm not trying to get cut off, off guard off, off of nothing, man. So that's kind of crazy to think about, man. You got to be more aware of seekers. Edit. I got to call it like I see it. I've seen this too many times. That's an edit. It is now being reported that one of the largest data leaks ever discovered has occurred. So here's how to check if you've been affected. Yesterday, researchers found that a massive 26 billion personal records had been exposed in what they called the mother of all breaches. With Zuck commenting, mm -hmm. <laughs> rookie numbers. This is the list of the companies affected, which include the likes of Twitter, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Dropbox, MyFitnessPal, Adobe, Canva, and the list goes on. The researchers claim that this breach mm -hmm. is extremely dangerous and could prompt a tsunami of cybercrime including identity theft and unauthorized access to your personal and sensitive accounts. Now, regardless if you care about any of these accounts listed, mm -hmm. usernames and password combinations were found in the leak. So if you're using these same ones elsewhere, you are being advised to change them and use two-factor authentication. Normal looking photos that have a dis- What the hell? You know what's the most disturbing part about that freaking story was? There was like, I'm gonna guarantee you if you look up in the news, no news is, is probably out there, so it's even reporting about that massive data leak, bro. That makes me wonder how many times has that actually happened, man. And our freaking in it, our freaking information just floating on the net, and these cyber thieves they can just access it like that, bro. But the freaking public, we're not even aware of that. Seekers, man, what do you guys think about that? Comment down below, man. I know you guys have some thoughts on that. Disturbing backstory, part twenty-one. This is known as the pale blue dot. This picture is a Voyager one photo, and the blue dot is Earth. On that tiny dot is everyone you've ever loved, and every person that's ever lived. This photo was taken of Virginia K by her killer. He was a truck driver who would pick up prostitutes, runaways, and hitchhikers, and he would rape, torture, and sometimes kill them. While this appears to be an ordinary group of friends having fun, it is actually a group of Nazi concentration camp officers at Auschwitz. The man on the left is Edmund Kimber, a 6 foot 9 serial killer who murdered over 10 people. The man on the right is interviewing him. After the interview was finished, he clicked the panic button under the desk, but the guards didn't respond. Kemper noticed his panic and said, If I wanted, I could screw your head off and place it on the table to greet the guards. They entered the room 30 minutes later. 30? What the hell? That one sent freaking chills down my damn spine, bro. He hit the panic button and 30 minutes later, what? Everybody in that freaking response team, bro, has to get freaking... Fired, bro. What the hell? Why did it take him that long, man? And nothing even happened to him, so I guess what he said was true. If he really wanted to take him out, man, he could have taken him out. He chose not to, bro. People, man, freaking even disturbing, bro. What the hell? My Barbie is 300 years old, and she's alive. Every toy on the planet is alive. Your toys are sleeping, and they can awake at any moment. Look at your toys in the eyes and tell me if it blinks. Whoa. That was scary. Once again, I'm gonna have to call probably edit on that video.
Do you know what would happen if the Earth lost oxygen for five seconds? Now, most humans and animals can hold their breath for that long, so initially your body probably wouldn't even notice, but you would notice it when the sky goes completely black, due to the atmosphere having no oxygen to scatter the rays of light from the sun. Any form of transportation that relies on combustion would immediately stop working, causing planes to fall from the sky and millions of cars to stop working. The ozone layer would also be gone, causing everyone and everything to start the cooking process. While that's happening, your eardrums would also explode due to the change in atmospheric pressure, anything made out of concrete, including buildings, bridges, and dams, would immediately collapse. And since the Earth's crust is made out of 45% oxygen, it would also completely collapse, and everyone and everything would immediately start falling towards the center. This case is gonna give you chills. Welcome. Whoa. Well, I mean, he freaking really wouldn't have death if the freaking if the world didn't have oxygen for five seconds, like when I first saw. You didn't think nothing bad would happen, but if you freaking Think about it, it's like a lot of things, man, freaking uses oxygen or something like that. Or the, the freaking, like you said, the layer will freaking disappear. There'll just be madness and destruction all around, bro. It's, it's the simple things we don't even freaking think about that we take for granted, man, that really can affect our everyday lives, bro. Welcome to Creep Time on TikTok with Silas Dean. This story is from a man named Grady Hendrix about his childhood back in the 80s. So his parents had moved into this house around May of 1981. He's like any other nine-year-old kid. He realizes he can sneak downstairs in the middle of the night and grab anything he wants from the kitchen without his parents finding out. Until one night, while he's sneaking down in the dark, he hears something that makes him freeze. The sound of a fork hitting a counter in the kitchen. From the hallway, he can see the outline of a tall, thin man who had been eating at the kitchen counter. He races upstairs and he gets his parents up from their sleep, but of course by the time they go downstairs, there's nothing. But over the next couple of months, there's odd instances of strange noises in the house, there's things being misplaced in the kitchen. Over that summer, while he's lying awake in bed, he hears movements coming from the ceiling above him, so he flips over on his back. He recounts seeing a pair of eyes staring back at him from the ceiling vent. He becomes hysterical. His parents get up, they have to search the attic, they search all the crawl spaces, but still, they're not finding anything. They just keep assuming that he's freaked himself out. But by the end of that summer, an HVAC inspector comes to the house and finds something horrific. The rotting remains of a dead man who had crawled into their vent system and was living in their walls. I can't think of anything more chilling than that, but of course what this meant was that everything Grady had seen was real. Since I've heard this story, I, I can't look at the vents in my house. I'm so freaked out. You can imagine that, bro. A whole freaking man or person was living in your house, man, and your kid was trying to bore you about it. You just thought it was his imagination, man. I can't even freaking imagine that, bro. Now, like I said, I can't even look at the freaking bits or something the same, bro. I'm gonna thank somebody in my damn house. That's crazy, man. The things that people can do, bro. Like, how did he, how could he stay in the house that long, man? They didn't really notice. Man, people need to be more aware, bro. Seekers, if that happened to you, man, tell me what you guys pick up on that, like, right away, man. Somebody was in your house. Creepy photos that can't be explained. This photo was taken in the basement of a house that was for sale a few years ago. The photo was taken by a realtor because he wanted to show his clients the house. Everything looks completely normal in this house mm -hmm. until you look at the left corner. What appears to be a fairly transparent woman is standing towards the bottom of the stairs going to the basement. The realtor insists that nobody was there when he took the photo, but the strangest part about this photo lies in the backstory of this house. The house was previously owned by a man and his wife, but unfortunately the wife passed away so the husband decided to sell. Another reason why the man wanted to sell his house is because after his wife passed, he kept hearing strange noises in the middle of the night while home alone. What do you guys think? Who or what was captured on camera? Like and follow. Videos that can never be explained. A police body cam Ready? captures lady vanishing out of nowhere. Hey, how's it going? I'm speeding, wasn't I? Yeah, you completely blew past that stop sign in front of me. I'm I'm so sorry. I okay. literally didn't even see it. Uh, no this is my first time being pulled over. Alright, can I see your driver's license registration, please? Yeah. It's not a big deal. Here's my license, but, um, uh, this is my mom's car, so... Where are you headed to where you're speeding and missing stop signs? I was just headed to a friend's house. It's, like, literally right there. It's a okay. birthday party. Uh, not mine, but... Any drugs or alcohol in the vehicle? No. 
changes you man especially that first photo man how the hell did he get all those damn tattoos in prison that's the freaking real question we need to be asking he had no face test or nothing man as soon as he got out it's like freaking face was covered in that bro how did he get them done it's really freaking bo my damn mind bro hmm. more questions we need to be asking man I need to freaking check up on that, bro. Do some more research. Can we say they see something under the stairs? I don't see it. Okay, I think I saw a little shadow movement. But nothing too crazy. Animal facts that'll make you see the world a little differently. The only reason tigers are orange is because the animals on their grocery list are Helen Keller to the color. So if you're something like a deer, this is what the biggest cat in the world and a striped uber to the afterlife looks like. Polar bears have black skin. The only reason they look white is because their fur is translucent and hollow. And with hollow hair, light bounces off of them and reflects enough to look like an aggressive piece of snowdrift. Flamingos are naturally pink. The color comes from the carotenoid pigments in the shrimp and algae they eat. If they didn't eat it, they look like an Ikea kitchen, just 50 shades of bland. If you move like Bugs Bunny and start ODing on carrots, the same thing can happen to you but instead of pink you turn a shade of orange if you think an orca's eyes are here you fall for their trap card it's actually right there the giant white patches are false eyes to trick any prey that tries to fight back it's just devious this is a black bear let me explain this is a black bear with a mutation called leucism that basically turns it into a shiny pokemon matter mm -hmm. of fact all three of these are black bears and i can't even be mad i'm black and i'm proud but i'm black and i'm brown at least according to crayola bulls hating the color red is a myth <laughs> Mostly because bulls can't even see the color red, but chickens do, and because their instinct is to attack the color red, you're more likely to get pressed by a pack of poultry if you cosplay as the Kool-Aid man, the more you know. Three scared. What? That bull pack is freaking mind-blowing, man, because you know in all the freaking TV shows, movies, man, that guy with the freaking, there was a guy with a red cape or something in front of the bull that makes the freaking angry, but to hear that they can't even freaking see <laughs> I tell you, man, the stuff they put this media and stuff, man, we be watching, but really be alive, man. You don't want us to know the freaking truth, bro. That's why I love freaking checking out these videos with you guys, man. Expanding my mind, and hopefully it expands you guys' minds as well. That's freaking crazy, bro. you rather get attacked by a chicken wearing red than a freaking bull, bro. Very facts about dreams. One. If you are dreaming and some weird creature appears in your dream, there is someone watching you. 2. Mm. If you are unable to fall asleep that means you are awake in someone else's dream. 3. 90% of your dream are actually traumas. Really? In 1995, 13-year-old Thad Phillips was sleeping when someone picked Phillips up off the couch. He assumed it was his father carrying him to bed. Thad soon found he was outside with an unfamiliar, friendly, older teen boy named Joe Clark. <laughs> Joe took Thad to his home, saying he needed some help with his car and that some other boys were coming over for a party. But once they got into Joe's house, Joe's friendly teen persona disappeared. He threw Thad on his bed and started jumping on him, and then began to twist Thad's foot around his leg until the bone above his ankle snapped and splintered. Oh, For the next 43 hours, Thad would endure horrific torture, with many bones broken, including his knees. His ankles broken so bad that his feet were backwards. Thad asked Joe why he was doing this, and Joe said, I enjoy the sound and the feeling of bones breaking. I've done this before, and I love it. It was later discovered that he had abducted and tortured Christian Steiner that had initially thought to have drowned in the nearby river. Horror movies based on truth. Did they freaking catch that sick individual, man? He said he loves to hear bones breaking, bro. 
And if he can get to this house, man, if he can just scoop him up and just start figuring out torturing him, bro. Man. People, bro. I said, they get, some, they get into weird things, bro. And it doesn't end well for anybody else, man. Whew. Hopefully, man, they call them. Revenge. Strangers. Mm. Strangers. I've seen them. I've seen that trailer before. So it's based on the real Jesus story. Never taken seriously in Hollywood. Like, why is he mocked almost everywhere? We got Jesus getting a lap dance on SNL. Megan Thee Stallion dressed as a demon. P. Diddy on a cross. Tupac on a cross. Mm. Madonna on a cross. Nas on a cross. The baby on a cross. Even Lil Dicky on a cross. We got Lady uh -huh. Gaga in a nun outfit with an upside down cross. Katy Perry pretending to be Birdie with a demon behind her. And an upside down cross. Look, what I'm trying to say is how did being demonic become so cool and popular? Have we lost our way that much? This is demonic. They're not even hiding the fact that they are the devil. This is a satanic dance and ritual. Uh -huh. Somehow this is meant to be the entertainment standard for our youth, for the world. This is promoting the pathway to hell. Like a lot of us are just sitting here shrugging it off. It's no big deal. But that isn't weird to you that we have normalized it that much? Whew. We have lost our way from God. If you still believe in good and still believe in God, comment amen down below. Because at this point, I'm afraid of what we'll start normalizing next. Make sure to hit that follow button because my next story will be mm. I don't think this was a... What I was saying, like... To pick a point, but like, yeah, I think it has gotten to a point where the problem, like, people just think it's normalized, they think it's just for entertainment, but I don't think that's something that you should be doing, man, because it, it, to me, it just won't end well, bro. It just affects a lot of people, man. You saw what happened with Lil Miles X, bro, and I don't have to speak on that, man, so just gotta do some more research into that. The picture that many people were supposed to see. And these things we, we typically talk about them. This was the photo that I wanted to talk about. And unlike some of them, for this one, I could pretty much spot straight away what was wrong with the picture. Yet mm -hmm. This was a picture that nobody was ever supposed to see. We know it took place somewhere in the suburban neighborhood. Like quiet town, entire family vanished without a trace. But they searched the phones because those were oddly enough left behind on the phone of the mother. This was a picture that was found. And I'll tell you why it's so strange. Before we do, as always, if you have not listened to Creep Time, the podcast go click the link in my bio to listen on spotify or apple like i said this picture taken by the mother right if you look to the back who is that mm. in this room what about this file that leaked this was a family of all boys a husband and the mother is this unexplained woman that's in their house nothing in their file to explain this person the hell were you? who was that she was the cause of it Has to be editing. Y'all yeah, can see the freaking Edward above. In 2007, ABC News did a segment on death threats and the investigated families who had experienced that. Mm. Little did they know that this series was about to take a terrifying turn. One of the families they investigated claimed that they would receive calls late at night from a man with a scratchy voice. He threatened to unalive them, their parents, their pets, basically anyone that was related to the family. What terrifies me is the caller even knew what the family was wearing at the time of them receiving the call. Police tried to trace the phone numbers, however it would always be traced back to the people's phones. And during the segment, police actually found out that the person giving the death threats was actually a hacker and he was in their phone. He was tracking their location, what they were seeing and hearing, basically everything. They never found out who it was, and that truly goes to show that you never know who is listening. It's freaking scary, bro. Think about it, man. Like, what's up? If you can stalk him to the next level, man. You heard of stalking before, but he knew, like, the location, what they was wearing, anything. So he could get them at any point in time, man, and they never freaking know. They had to be walking around probably scared for what, what would happen next to him, man. Things, but technology can allow you to do, bro. Somebody could be watching me right now, and I would never even know, bro. That's how freaking advanced the technology got, man. 
Mm. Scary, bro. How to tell if a zodiac sign likes you? Virgo. They're shy, but if you like them back, they won't shut up. Mm. Aries. They're always glancing at you. Pisces. Ask you a lot of questions and tries to make you smile. Gemini. How don't you tell is the real question. Capricorn. They show off so freaking much. Scorpio. They're always staring at you when you're not looking. show or that did they even want that special during this Christmas or not man because you know people freaking they took Christmas they think it's just all about gift giving man but it's truly it's, a, it's more than that bro it's more about it's more than the gifts man it's about being with your family about being with I guess with the people you love bro Let's talk about another <laughs> South Asian serial killer who claimed a whopping 100 lives. Javed Iqbal was a Pakistani serial killer who confessed to the murder and sexual abuse of 100 boys ages ranging from 6 to 16. When his father Ooh. died in 1993, Javed inherited 3 million rupees. He used the money to open different businesses designed to meet young boys and teenagers. He'd lure his victims by leaving money on the floor of his video game arcade. Whenever a child would pick up the money, he would accuse them of theft and take them to a room where he would sexually assault them as their punishment for stealing. Javed also met other victims through pen pal programs. He'd convince them to send photos of themselves, select his favorites, and then he'd send them gifts. After that, he'd arrange to meet them and sexually assault them. He'd abduct his victims, assault them, and then strangle them to death. He'd then dismember the corpses of his victims and submerge them in vats of hydrochloric acid. After the bodies liquefied, he'd dump everything into a nearby river. In 1998, Javed and an employee were robbed and beaten by another employee. He suffered a severe head injury and was hospitalized for 22 days. Right after that, he was arrested and charged with sexual assault. Somehow, he was granted bail and most of his property was sold to cover his medical care. He moved out to the slums of Lahore where he would commit more heinous crimes. In 1999, Javed wrote a letter to the police and a local Lahore newspaper where he confessed to the murder of 100 boys. When the police got to his home, they were met with bloodstains, vats of acid containing partially dissolved bodies, and plastic bags containing clothes and shoes of his victims. Note cards with details and photos of his victims were also found, but Javed was gone. The police also found out he'd been sharing his home with three teenage boys who were believed to be his accomplices. On December 30th, 1999, Javed gave himself up. However, when it came time for him to stand trial, he denied any involvement in the killings. He claimed he confessed to the murders to draw attention to the dangers children living in poverty experience. Thankfully, the judge didn't believe him, and he was sentenced to death by strangulation in the same public square he frequented when searching for victims. His body was also to be cut into a hundred pieces and dissolved in acid. His three accomplices were also found guilty. However, on October 8, 2001, he and one of his accomplices were found dead in her cell. It seems like they had committed suicide. However, there's speculation that they were murdered because autopsies revealed that they were beaten prior to their death. Javed's motive for these murders was his rage over a perceived injustice committed by the Lahore police. They beat him after arresting him on charges of sexual assault against a young runaway boy in the 1990s. Mm. Since his mother was forced to watch his decline due to these injuries before suffering a fatal heart attack while he was still incarcerated, he 
vowed to make a hundred mothers cry for their sons just as she had cried for him. Javed bragged to authorities that he could have easily killed 500 or more children. He stopped at a hundred because that's what he promised himself. Freaking even individual, bro. Freaking put all those freaking people in that damn for that freaking trauma, bro. Because he wanted to keep a promise to his mom, man. Whew. And the hair that there was freaking other people involved in it, man. It's like, damn, ring or something, bro. That's just freaking a bone chilling case, man. Truly. You never know, man. The things people would do, man, when they freaking hurt or broken or shattered, bro. They can truly do some evil things. YouTube, that's it, man, for this video for you guys today, man. Like I said, if you guys save me to the end of the video, you're a real seeker, man, seeking the truth, man. So I appreciate that. Like I said, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, man, so we can hit the algorithm more so we can find more seekers, man, so we can grow our community together. I just want to, um, like I said, thank you guys for the support, and I've been seeing all you guys' support or comments. I really appreciate that. Like I said, man, I'm kind of torn with the idea of doing, like, daily uploads in February. I don't know if you guys want me to do it or not, but... Tell me down below, man, if you guys want me to do it, maybe I can try. But, um, yep, you guys can catch in the next videos. I'm out. Peace, YouTube. What's up, Seekers? Welcome back to the channel. You guys already know what we do here, man. We break down scary cupid videos, man, on the net, on the web, from YouTube videos to TikTok videos to IG videos, anything weird, usual, and explained you can find right here. On this channel, just want to thank the seekers, man, who's been tapping in with us, man, subbing up to the channel. Greatly appreciate that, man. You're seeking the truth just like you. That's why you found us today, man. Found this video for you guys today, man. So let's do what we do best, bro. Seek the truth. Four of the Nevada bullies arrested over the horrific mass attack outside of Las Vegas school that resulted in the death of 17-year-old Jonathan Lewis Jr. are being tried as adults at the start of a trial which could see them jailed for life. 16-year-old Dontrell Beaver and Trevian Randolph and 17-year-old Damian Hernandez and Gianni Robinson are among eight schoolmates accused of beating Lewis to death outside Rancho High School in Las Vegas on November 1st. In court, prosecutors said they were charging the teens with second-degree murder instead of first-degree murder because they could not prove premeditation, but that they continue to go through the evidence. I don't understand how an art seekers, bro. It's freaking crazy, man. You can't even get into a, you don't even get into a fight nowadays, bro, because it's just not worth it. Because the freaking unthinkable, the unthinkable can happen, man. Like all those freaking kids, bro. And the freaking school fighters, bro, man. I see my freaking share of freaking school fights, man, but they didn't end in that type of way, man. But nowadays, bro, the world's crazy. It's not even freaking worth it, bro. If you're in this situation, just try to walk away, man. Because, see, because you never know what's going to happen. Argument over breadcrumbs can cause someone to do something so heinous to someone else. 35-year-old Dimitri Fricano stabbed his girlfriend, 28-year-old Erica Pretty, to death after she called him out for leaving breadcrumbs on their hotel bed. In 2017, they were on vacation in San Teodoro when on one of those nights, Dimitri attacked Erica and stabbed her 57 times. Dimitri was originally sentenced to 30 years in prison, but what happened next, no one saw coming. You see, when Dimitri Dimitri was sentenced in 2018, he weighed about 260 pounds. Mm. Then from 2022 to 2023, Dimitri gained 200 pounds and now weighs about 450 pounds. So because of his health and the horrible diet served in prison, Dimitri was recently released after only serving five years. The court ruled that the food in the prison could end up killing him, so he had to get out. And get this, Dimitri will serve the rest of his sentence under house arrest at his parents' home near Milan where he can get access to a healthy diet. So this is a slap in the face to the victim's family. But keep in mind, this happened in Italy, so I'm guessing the laws over there are a little bit more lenient. So if you guys think his release was valid or should he have been kept there for the remaining of a sentence? A man has been... See, because that has to be one of the freaking most craziest cases I've heard, bro. Oh, some freaking bread comes, man. You do the unthinkable. Really? Of a bread comes in the freaking bed, man. And the freaking, yeah, like I said, shock to me, bro. He get freaking got out, man, on freaking house rest, bro. All because he said he was gaining weight. Like, 
What the hell? She said that's the type of Italy. She said it happened in Italy. Yeah, so the laws may be more lenient, but I'm about to check that out, man, because that doesn't make no sense. Like him gaining all that freaking weight, and they just said, oh no, we gotta, you gotta um, let you up because you can freaking end up. And it at all, man, because you gained too, too much weight. And he just letting him go and just let him serve the rest on house arrest? That don't sound right to me, Seekers. What do you guys think, man, about that case? I know that's going to get y'all guys' minds turning. Been arrested for indecent exposure after pleasuring himself at a come and go gas station. Officers, however, weren't able to catch the man in the act after he took the name of the fuel station a little too literally. Customers identified Kenneth Kelly as the perpetrator, and when the police went to his house with surveillance footage, he confirmed that he had clothes matching the suspect, but denied being the man in the video. Eventually, Kenneth admitted it was him and claimed he wasn't actually playing with himself, but was just scratching his genitals. Did you know that Gino to I didn't even know there was a freaking gas station some called Come and Go. Like, he took the freaking name literally and just did that freaking disgusting act, man. But even if that's the name, you should know never to do something like that freaking public series, man. There's no way There's no way out of that one, bro. You can't talk your way out of that one, man. People need to think, bro. Use their head before they do dumb situations, man. Campo actually served time in prison. Many people in the UK absolutely love Gino, who is well known for appearing on daytime television. Mm. However, many people don't know that he does have a criminal past. This true crime case honestly reads like a bizarre fan fiction. In 1998, way before he ever appeared on ITV's This Morning, Gino was 21 years old. He was an unknown waiter living in North London. Mm. He broke into the home of well-known 80s singer Paul Young. He was known for having hits such as Wherever I Lay My Hat. Gino stole Paul's guitar collection, which was reportedly worth around £4,000. He also stole his platinum disc. Mm. Police investigating the crime found that Gino had actually unknowingly left his DNA at the crime scene. He dropped a cigarette butt with his DNA on it. They were able to match this DNA to Gino, and he was sentenced to two years in prison. Mm. Gino actually reached out to Paul personally to apologize to him just prior to entering the I'm a Celebrity Jungle back in 2009. Gino stated that he was involved with the wrong people back then and was on the wrong path. This is the photo of a man who was sentenced to 20 years in prison simply because he looked like someone else. He was charged for armed robbery simply because police officers couldn't tell them apart. He later met the man who actually committed the crime while in prison. Nah, seekers, you gotta freaking hear that, bro. You got freaking put in jail just because you look like the person who did it, and because they, the police, didn't want to freaking do their jobs. You ended up, ended up meeting the actual guy who did it, bro. Hell no, nah, man. They're gonna have to be some. They're gonna have to do something man, to make that right, bro. Just because you look like a person, man, who did it, bro, and the police didn't do their jobs. None of the freaking years of his life probably got wasted, seekers crazy case man i told you man when i watch these freaking videos with you guys i always expand my mind hopefully it does the same with you guys as well this is your chin mama do this and put it on your chin oh. this is samantha charby and her daughter vianne mangrio sally they are no longer here with us today they lived in burnley uk they had a beautiful loving mother and daughter relationship vianne's father living in pakistan vianne was only 14 but both her parents were very proud of her because she already had plans to go to cambridge and study law saman had hired a man named shabazz khan to do some handiwork around the house but he did more than just handiwork on the day of october 1st 2020 the bodies of saman and vianne were found when police decided to go to their house for a welfare check police launched an investigation and found that the handyman on cctv was there that day. 52 year old Shabazz mm. Khan was then arrested. He had laced Saman's rose wine with diacetyl before ultimately strangling her. A little while after that, at 3.25 p.m., Vianne was coming home from school, and when she arrived into the house, Khan drugged her and ended her life too. To mm. throw him off as a suspect, Khan tried to make it look like the bodies were set on fire by the tea kettle, but had trouble doing so. So instead, he started to write on the wall, COVID-19 and my mom is evil, to make it look like the two mother and daughter didn't like each other and had a falling out. Luckily for autopsy, it showed that that wasn't the case and that Saman passed away from pressure on her neck while her daughter's body was so badly burned that they could only say that she died of asphyxiation. In Khan's loft, they found jewelry worth 27,000 pounds that mm. belonged to Saman. Khan was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 34 years. While 
while his wife, who also tried to lie about his whereabouts to the cops, was jailed for 30 months. Always be careful on who you allow in your home. Oh, no. True statement seekers. No, 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 silly. To try it. No, no, no. But it exploded. And they were both found dead. She. How's that? You can't replace children, but you can replace the effect that they give you. Children are so easy to conceive. I didn't form a pattern as most, but blood is blood. It's crazy, serious. Giants? See, because you believe in giants? That man, what the hell is going through his freaking head, bro? It's like he just freaking broke and just went on a freaking spree, man. All those damn people, bro. See, because what possesses people to do freaking things like that, man. The world is a freaking evil place, Seekers, bro. We always got to be aware of our surroundings, man. Because you never know what could happen. That was freaking crazy, bro. All those people. What hmm. would you do if you saw a severed foot in the sand? Hi, my name is Ethan, and trigger warning, this is a dark case. In 2007, a woman was walking alongside a beach in British Columbia, and she noticed a pair of shoes on the beach. When she walked up closer to it, she noticed there was a sock in the shoe, and inside that sock was a human foot. And what's crazy is that wasn't the only one. By the end of 2008, there had been a total of six times where severed feet had washed up on shore from five men and one woman. They were actually able to identify one of the man's foot, but they believe that he had unalived himself. And for the other five individuals, it still remains a mystery to this day. Some think it was a plane crash, while others believe it was the 2004 tsunami, but no one will ever truly know. Animals that can- Seekers, man, what do you guys think about that, bro? Like, you freaking walking along the beach and you just found a severed, like, leg? Along the way, man? And that shit is still unsolved to this day, bro. Was a tsunami or like they say it could have been something else, bro. I'm gonna have to check on that one, Seekers, bro. That's a weird one. An unusual one as well, man, that they couldn't solve that. Kill themselves. Up first are mountain sheep. These sheep evolved to have incredibly strong horns that can take out any animal. However, their horns are actually the cause of their own death too. As their horns grow, they begin to penetrate their own neck. And as time passes, they continue to grow further and further. Until eventually, it kills them. Then we have deer. During mating season, many deer get into aggressive fights. And every time they do, they risk a horrible death. When they fight, their horns can get interlocked with the horns of other deer. Unless someone is able to shoot their horns to break them, they're stuck until they eventually die of starvation and thirst. Then we have turtles. If a turtle ever rolls over or falls, falls on its back, it's impossible for it to get upright again. Like deer, unless another turtle or human can get them upright again, they die of starvation. Top three largest- Hmm, man, you didn't even think about that, man. You know, when people see freaking turtles on their back, they think, oh, so cute and stuff like that, but, bro, that's really like a life or death situation, bro. I didn't even think about it like that, man. And the thing about deer is too, bro. Get freaking in a loop, man, and you saw that, man, he was just dragging that freaking body, bro. Nature, bro. It's full of freaking bizarre things, man. I didn't even think about secrets, bro. Expanding my knowledge, bro. Just animals of all time. Number three, Megalodon. The Megalodon was a massive prehistoric shark species that existed approximately from 23 to 3.
animals. Mm -hmm. You will not believe the horrific things that this woman allegedly Shocker. did with her dog. This is Brittany McClure, and up until a couple of weeks ago, she lived a completely normal life. Brittany is from Michigan here in the United States. She had a boyfriend, and everything seemed to be going great in her life. That is, until her boyfriend decided to check on some of the security camera footage from a camera that he had installed inside of the couple's home. Apparently, Brittany's ex-boyfriend had noticed that there had been some movement in the living room in the middle of the day, so he went to go check the footage. And when he went to go watch the footage, he could not believe what he was seeing. As he watched in horror, he saw his own girlfriend, Brittany, performing a act on the dog using her mouth. And she was doing this with a massive smile on her face. And when she was finished, she tried to get the dog, the couple's dog, to perform the same act on her. The detective that's investigating this case noted that while this was going on, Brittany was saying words like, good boy. The detective even stated that in two decades of police work, he had never seen a video quite like the one the boyfriend brought into him. Now, Brittany was arrested and charged with a number of different things. Obviously, this is considered animal abuse, and this case is just being brought to trial or whatever the process is right now. So we're going to find out more about all of Brittany's devices and exactly what she's been doing to her dog in the house. But I just cannot believe this story, and I cannot even fathom what her boyfriend must have felt when he just went to go check the security camera video and saw that absolutely disgusting, shocking, horrifying and yeah, just ugh. Seekers, that's freaking yeah. Like they said, one of the most bizarre cases I've ever heard as well, man. Like to do that to your own freaking dog? But well, what the hell is going through her mind? Man? Like the boyfriend, like I said, right there. The boyfriend's probably like, "What the? F did I just watch, bro?" And she was saying, "Good boy, disgusting, man." Like, ain't no whole freaking relationship, bro. Why would you do that to your freaking dog? At least people now, they seek us, bro. Like I said, man, they be getting crazy, bro. What do you guys think about that freaking case? Ironized Youth presents Life. Molly Lee was born in Barcelon in England in about 1685. She was known for being very ugly and so never married and was shunned by the town. It was said that she had an adult mind and abilities from birth. She was able to eat a crust of bread just a few hours after being born and would not drink her mother's milk. She was also known for her temper and did not have many friends apart from a blackbird which followed her about everywhere. Mm. She didn't attend church often so Parson Spencer, who was the rector of the local church, hated her. Apparently after declaring her a witch, all the beer in the local pub turned sour. After he shot at her bird, it flew away and he had stomach pains for the next few weeks. After Molly was dead and buried, the locals paid a visit to her home. Apparently they saw her sitting by the fire and knitting. Parson Spencer then dug up her body and rotated it 90 degrees. Huh. Which one? Five things I guarantee you didn't know about gorillas. The sound of them beating their chest is something no words can possibly ever prepare you for. This 300 to 400 pound live action Donkey Kong is afraid of insects like caterpillars and reptiles, especially chameleons. Okay. Maybe gorillas will play with almost anything but hit the brakes immediately the moment they see this. Same dude y'all thought could do something with Godzilla gets sent packing by his mimi. Now ain't that a bit. On top of that, mm -hmm. gorillas hate water and they really hate rain. If a troop of gorillas gets caught in a storm, they'll just sit motionless and wait for the rain to pass. If there's a cave or some shelter nearby, they'll go ahead and hide in it too. Which is weird because gorillas will walk through swamps and babies will play in water, but rain is where they draw the line. Gorillas bite as hard as grizzlies and twice as hard as lions. A motivated grizzly bear has a bite force of about 1,100 pounds per square inch. Streets say that's enough to crush a bowling ball. But gorillas have a bite force of 1,300 pounds per square inch. Damn. And who y'all call the king of the jungle is literally half as strong, checking in at 650. That mouthpiece is what helps them crush 40 pounds of vegetation every day. To digest it all, gorillas have a massive amount of bacteria in their gut, which also means gorillas are almost always constantly farting. No, but like seriously, they don't stop. Mm. If there's a family of gorillas nearby, best believe you're going to smell them way before you see them. That's five facts you didn't know about gorillas. Comment what animal you want next. A case that... See, cause man, what freaking those facts about gorillas that freaking shocked you, man? I think the one that got to me the most is like the freaking fighting power, bro. Saying that's more powerful than a bear or a damn lion. You wouldn't think that. It's interesting, bro. Or maybe you know they're saying lions, the freaking king of the jungle, man. But it could be actually the gorilla could be, you know, up on the up on the um chain as well, bro. It's crazy, see.
makes me sick. The murder of Kenneth White. These five teenagers was throwing rocks from an overpass. Eventually, one rock hit the windshield of White's car and hit his face. This oh, rocks, is what our parents warned us about. It's terrifying to think that a real human actually went through this. Angela Hammond was a mother from Clinton, Missouri, and in 1991, she was at a grocery store. And you know, back then, the general public didn't have cell phones, so she went to the payphone to call her fiance, Rob. Rob says the conversation was going normal, but then Angela had said that there was this weird car that kept circling her and, like, driving around. So Rob, doing what any normal boyfriend, fiance, husband would do, was like, Get out of there. Just go home. We'll talk later. So I guess that Angela thought that he had left, and so they continued talking, but then Angela says he came back. Then he hears her say something that I'm sure will haunt him for the rest of his life. She says, oh my God, what am I going to do? He then hears Angela scream, and then he hears silence. So Rob panicked, not knowing what to do. He knows he could call the cops, but it may be too late. He hops in his car and drives across town to go find Angela. So while on his way there, he hears someone screaming his name from a car going the opposite direction. So Rob hits a U-turn. He sees a pickup truck, and in a terrible twist of fate, Rob chasing down this car when his transmission goes out, and Angela is never seen or heard from again that's a freaking tragic case bro and it's freaking scary bro like back in the day yeah like i said there's no i guess no mobile phones and stuff like that bro he had to freaking chase down do it himself man because he i guess he's like i said i'm gonna call the cops because it was going they wouldn't have made it in time bro but they had that freaking transmission filter man you know that haunting and power for the for, for the rest of his life seekers, man. Like, bro, that's freaking insane, bro. You had to chase him down, bro, and the freaking transmission broke down, bro. Crazy. Whatever you do, never go searching for this video. These five friends were forced to kill each other by the Mexican cartel. These five young aged from 19 to 22 were looking for some sort of employment, and they were promised a high paying job at a call center. But when the alleged contact was taking them to meet the people for the job, it actually turned out to be a whole scheme to recruit them to the Mexican cartel. And when all five of these boys said they didn't want to join, the cartel then said okay and tied them up, taped their mouth and took a picture and then recorded one of the friends killing all the other four friends. And after that, they put the fifth one who just killed all of his friends into a car and set it on fire. I am telling you right now, do not go searching for this video because you will find it. And trust me, you do not want to see something like this. This case is absolutely horrific and the fact that this happens way more often than we think is just extremely scary and disturbing. It's just sad that these young men were just trying to get a job and make some money for themselves. But instead, it turned into a living nightmare. Rest in peace, these five young men. Choose your friends wisely. They, they didn't person. cover that in the documentary! Ew! His father know, right? became obsessed with his competition and it eventually ended in murder. The oh. modeling industry is a stressful and competitive one. You can get turned down for jobs for not fitting into the clothes that they've picked out for you, showing up to your job with dark eye circles, acne, or cuts and bruises on your body. Mm. A London model named George Coe had become increasingly obsessed with a more successful model named Harry Uzuka. They both served the same niche, so in theory, they were both up for the same modeling jobs. Mm. Harry's career was doing very oh. well. He'd modeled for large brands like Everlane and Levi's, and he was signed to cities across the world, which in turn meant that he was working more and making more. George Coe was fairly successful as well. He'd been in a spread for Esquire and walked for Alexander McQueen. Mm. But modeling is contract work, which means you can be booked or busy, or you can go for a year without working. Mm. George was experiencing the latter. 
After seeing that Harry was more successful than him in the same city, George decided to start emulating his look and modeling style. But this went beyond a professional sense and George started messaging Harry's actual friends. Ooh. Harry took to Twitter to accuse George of copying him. But George took it one step further by claiming that he had slept with Harry's girlfriend who was also a model named Ruby Campbell. The men agreed to a showdown on January 11, 2018 outside Harry's apartment where they would finally settle their differences. While Harry showed up armed with a metal pipe, George and his friends showed up with knives. Security cameras then showed George chasing down Harry and stabbing him. Mm. Jealousy is truly a disease, and rather than a focus on his own career, George decided to end both his and Harry's by committing murder. George Coe was sentenced to a minimum of 25 years behind bars, and it seems like the only jobs he'll be booking are interviews about the crime. It's crazy, seekers, bro. Things, man, like she said, jealousy will do, but I can freaking make you think the unthinkable, man. That's why sometimes, bro, it's not best to think about what the other person got and stuff like that because it'll just drive you crazy. You'll be like, why does he or her, why does she got this stuff that I want but I don't, man? It'll just take you down the dark path, bro. Just focus on yourself. Just try to improve yourself, man. Don't worry about the next person. Your time won't come, seekers, bro. Trust me. This viral video from an all-male college mm -hmm. in Madrid has shocked Spain. The video shows students at Elias Aulja staging a coordinated mass catcalling directed at nearby female students. Universidad Complutense de Madrid says the ringleader of the incident has been expelled and that a full investigation would take place. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez said mm. the footage was inexplicable, unjustifiable and disgusting. According to Publico, this isn't the first time this exact same thing has happened, with older students reportedly teaching younger students at the all-male college the chant in previous years. Mm. Irene Montero, Spain's Equality Minister, said it is an obvious sign that sex education is needed and that institutions must stop legitimizing sexist discourse. Serious, man. What do you guys think about that? That was freaking crazy, bro. Like the freaking older students teaching the younger students that was chance, man. I don't think they, they shouldn't have been doing that, bro. Putting them on the dark path, bro. Like to have that coordinated as well, man. They said the freaking ring leader got freaking expelled, bro. Man, he ain't even in college no more, bro. Can't do things like that, serious. Have you guys heard of the satanic Oreo theory? We all know mm -hmm. and love Oreos, right? But after this, you might not want to eat them anymore. If you look mm -hmm. at an Oreo cookie, you notice that there's symbols on top of every little cookie. The symbol looks closely related to the double cross eternal symbol. Now, from what we know, they supposedly put symbols in everything, including our cartoons, movies, and even on our food to pay tribute to Satan, right? Now, the mm -hmm. double cross eternal symbol represents the Leviathan symbol, which is a curse, a spell. Now, some people believe that they place these symbols on the food you eat to curse or shall I say put a piece of Satan inside of you. You know sort of how in church you eat a piece of the bread which means you're putting a piece of Jesus inside of you. Mm. He's becoming a part of you. By the way before we continue this story type amen in the comments to ward off any evil spirits that come off this video. The theory also states that the word Oreos originates from the ancient Greek and Egyptian term Oreos which just happens to be the Egyptian serpent that people used to worship. And let's not talk about the super secret bunker that the Oreo company has built in Norway where they claim mm. to only be holding the formula to Oreo inside. Now, I don't know if this theory is true. I don't really think I believe it but it is a wild one. What do you think? Is it real or are people seekers man well we've been talking about this in the past couple of videos man how they be putting messages and things and we just don't be paying attention to it not ahead that they put those junction on oreos bro you know everybody love freaking oreos man you wouldn't even pay attention to it you're just thinking all oh, those symbols i'm just eating it but is there more to that we're gonna have to check that out seekers man <sighs> gotta be careful about the days you eat now too bro that's just Begin to blow my mind, seekers.
at it. In the daytime, my parents send me out in the day. You all right? What are you doing? Just uh, doing Where's Joanna? interview. Joanna, I should hang out. She's around here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Take care of her, all right? Okay. Do you understand? I love Joanna. We, Joanna. Jo Joanna. Who's the lady? What's up? Head. How are you doing? Give me your head. What the hell? Who's that guy? I don't know. Hey! Hey, your house is on fire! What? Your house is on fire here! What? Your house! What do you mean? Oh I keep that with We got it out here. Oh my god, thank you! Oh my god! Oh wow. Oh, 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 it's close. Oh my god! Wow, that was bad. Good job. Thank you! Oh, good. Good people, man. Could have ended very badly. This movie was absolutely brutal. Easily one of the best horror movies of 2023. I watched a screening of Eli Roth's Thanksgiving a few days ago, and my jaw mm. was literally on the floor. Not only did this movie deliver on shock factor, but it was really fun. I also met Addison Rae. She was really sweet. Eli Roth's really good at combining horror and comedy. If you've seen The Green Inferno, you already know. It's also one of 2023's highest rated horror films on Rotten Tomatoes. Basically, mm. after a Black Friday riot ends in tragedy, a mysterious Thanksgiving-inspired villain named John Carver terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts. W horror movie villain. He doesn't give a I enjoyed every second oh. of this. The actors did great. I definitely suggest checking this one out. Let me know what you think if you've already seen it. Imagine it's the Heard year 2024 that. and COVID-19 has mutated into COVID-23. The world is in an endless lockdown and everyone infected is forced into quarantine camps. This movie is called Songbird, so let's watch the trailer together. Tensions rise as we enter the 213th week of lockdown. A grim new reality emerges. COVID-23 has mutated. Beginning thermal scan. Thermal scan normal. A horrifying new development today. Confirms the virus attacks the brain tissue. Oh, whoa, 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 I'm immune. I'm immune. Then you know what? Worldwide death toll rises to over 110 million. All infected Americans are being forced into quarantine camps. Sarah. Sarah, what's going on? Department of Sanitation. Sarah, talk to me. I think my neighbor has a fever. It'll be so much easier if you just open the door. Mrs. Grant? You got visitors? Sarah, please. Sarah, open that door. Sarah, do not open that door. Nope. Oh. so cool it always kind of gets me because you just don't even want to think negative like that bro you don't want that something like that actually happen seekers seekers man that's it man for this video for you guys today if you stay with me to the end of the video you're a real one man true seeker man seeking the truth i appreciate that like i said man guys tell me in the comment section down below guys if you guys want me to start the discord so you guys can send me um your guys tiktok clips and whatever you guys want me to um review man i'm up to it if you guys want me to uh, so guys, hit that like button, man. Subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that post notification bell so you always get notified when I drop a videos. 
I'm trying to, as you guys can see, man, I'm trying to do daily now, and I'm sticking to it. I'm out. Peace, Seekers.